how do you know if your pitch deck is any good? I work on one pitch deck a day. I have dozens sent to me every single week, and I'm helping founders. I'm part of a team that has raised over $700 million for startups. I personally have raised over $100 million for my startups, other startups, as well as funds. And it's always that moment when a founder has to step back and say, is my pitch deck any good? And I'm going to show you in this video how I do it and how I rank my own pitch decks and I give myself a grade and I want to get into the S tier of every single pitch deck that I do. I go through slide by slide and if I can't check off things on this list to get my slide to at least an A level, I go back to work. Before we continue, my name is Ed Kang, seven time funded founder with two exits. That's just a fancy way of saying I failed a bunch of times to your benefit, especially when it comes to raising pre-seed or seed funding. I use videos like this and my entire YouTube channel to try and help founders avoid some of the catastrophic mistakes with your pitch decks and just general fundraising or building your startup, getting that traction to attract those investors. It's not to say you're not going to make mistakes, but I'm going to try and help you avoid some of the catastrophic mistakes that I've made and reduce the pain. This is hard enough as it is. I'm also the Chief Strategy Officer for Startups.com. If you're joining us from Startups.com, Thank you very much. Appreciate the support. While you're here, leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you have not done so already. Appreciate all the support and all the feedback. Let's jump into the checklist and how you get your pitch deck up to that S tier. At the bottom is the painful F tier. You do not want to score an F on your pitch deck, and this is how you check. If it's confusing, you already have an F. How can you tell this is where you need someone else, like an advisor like me, or peers, somebody, a practice investor, and if they're completely confused, you have failed your pitch deck, keep working at it. The next thing that gets you in the F tier is if you're adding non-critical information. For example, on your team slide, if you put a wall of text, your entire biography, you grew up in a small town, this is what your family was like, you're passionate about playing badminton and Dungeons and Dragons, which was me, anything that makes the investor go, why do I need to know this? This doesn't matter to me. You are in the F tier. That's the reason your deck needs to be cut down as much as possible. Eliminate non-critical information, non-critical slides. In fact, if you're sending out what I call the screener or introductory, otherwise known as the teaser deck, and you've got more than 12 slides in it, well, then you've got non-critical slides in there because the investor just needs to make a sorting decision. They're not going to invest based on a pitch deck alone. You've got so many steps that you have to go through. You just want to give them the teaser, give them the appetizer, and make them say, I want to learn more. I'm going to contact this founder. So you want to eliminate non-critical slides. You look at every slide and you say, is this critical? Does this absolutely need to be in here? If not, get rid of it. Now we're going to move into the D tier. And if at least you are clear, you are in the D tier. It's just clear what you're communicating, what your startup does. It's not confusing. I understand what you do. And there are a lot of great pitch decks out there that are super clear, but I still won't invest in them. That's the reason we're still in D tier, but you want to make it clear, crystal clear. After that, is it concise? And if you've eliminated the non-critical information, well, you're well on your way to making it concise, but are you getting to the point right away? Are you telling the investor what you want them to know right away? Within literally the first 10 seconds of looking at the slide, do you have that crisp and clear headline that says, this is what this slide's about, this is what I want you to know, and if you read nothing else on this slide, you've already gotten everything that you need, you are concise. If you're clear and you are concise, you're in the D tier, we've got many more tiers to go. Next, you're going to look at your slide and you're going to ask, is it compelling? Is it exciting? Is it visionary? But be careful. You don't want to make it exciting like you're talking to the customer saying, we're going to transform the world and change the way that you interface with information, with a decentralized blah, blah, blah to protect your privacy. Now you're talking to the customer. You're not talking to the investor. But the investor wants to know that you are excited about what you're doing, that you have clear conviction and you're saying, yes, we think we can win. We are totally amped up about this, the progress that we're making, the problem that we're solving. We care about our customers. Is it compelling? So I want to feel that. I want to have that vibe in there. And you can do that in a safe way without making it buzzy, shark tanky, hypey, using all that jargon. Get rid of the marketing stuff and talk to an investor in a way that makes him go, hey, wait a second. This is very compelling. We could all make a lot of money with this. Then after, are you offering creative insights? These are novel insights. 
information that the investor says, gee, I didn't know about that. I had a founder the other day tell me, Ed, did you know that it's not actually cancer that kills cancer patients after treatment? It's the cell damage around the cancer treatment. And I said, I had absolutely no idea whatsoever. Put that in your pitch deck. It doesn't come across in your pitch deck. I could tell you so many stories where a founder has a novel insight and they're not creatively articulating it in a way where the investor says, wow, I really appreciate this information. I didn't know this was a thing. My colleague, Will Schroeder, the pitch deck doctor at startups.com, he would tell a story about how you raise over a million dollars right away, explaining to investors there are people who can't afford a credit card. There are people who are unbanked, don't have financial identity, and can't even get a credit card. And the investors, because, well, they don't have that problem, were thinking to themselves, really, seriously? And when they showed the data, they saw the market opportunity. So you want to make sure that you have a creative insight on literally every slide. Show them something unique to make them go, huh, that's interesting. That gets you into the C tier. Now, once you've done all that, well, guess what? Are you competitive? Meaning, are you differentiated from the competition? Are you saying something that you know about your market, the problem solving it, that your competitors don't know? If an investor asks you, well, what about this competitor? You say, yes, they're great. And I've thought about it. We've learned a lot from them. But we know something that they don't know. This is our assumption that we are going to go in a contrarian fashion. And that's the best way to be differentiated is are you contrarian? Be able to say something only you can say and show something only you can show. If you are doing this, you are in the B tier of slides and a B tier pitch deck. You have a really great shot of getting that investor because guess what? Most decks that investors get, and I've seen them, fall into D tier. They are not clear, they are not concise. They are barely understandable, so they're not as confusing, and they have the right information because the founder has figured out what slides to put in, but it's just not clear and it's just not concise. The investor is gonna waste their time, they're gonna spend way too much work. So even if you are in C or B tier, you are two orders of magnitude past other founders. So get your slides up there and make sure that you are saying something different than your competitors. And that's going to come out in your competitive analysis slides. But through your entire deck, you need to be showing that you have a unique, novel approach to the market. As contrarian as possible is what I'd recommend. That's the way you hack your way into differentiation mode. But get to B tier at least. And then you can move to A tier, which is, do you have correct factual data? Most founders make their pitch decks all about their opinions. This is broken, and we got the best this, and we got the best that. It's the fastest in the world. Nobody else is doing this. These are all opinions, not backed by any facts whatsoever, and this makes investors completely check out. Because how do we know? How do you know? What's even worse than that, however, is if you are putting out incorrect data, you're just making stuff up. We've added this, and we've got an amazing wait list because so many people want our stuff. There's such strong demand. We're gonna disrupt the market. And you're saying things that just are not true, but then also, if you're putting out facts about competitors or facts about your industry that are not true and you're just making it up, that's going to come on due diligence and completely puts you in the F tier lower than the F tier. But if you have correct factual data, if you have a growth graph and you're showing it month by month, week over week, or you've got your statistics broken down and you're super clear on them, it's backed by showing your math, especially in your total addressable market. If you're showing correct factual data, that creates so much confidence. That creates trust in you as a founder, which brings us to the S tier, which is competence FOMO. Let me explain how this works. When founders go and get correct factual data, they've got a growth graph. They've got metrics. They've got week over week exponential growth. They are explaining customer acquisition costs, their churn rates, lifetime value. They've got all correct factual data, and it shows how competent you are as a founder. You know your stuff. You're executing against your plan. You're testing your assumptions, and you are that competent founder. Guess what? Competent founders are fundable founders because it's that competence that I trust because you might be wrong. You might have to pivot your startup. You might run into a total competitive wall and you're gonna pivot. If you're a competent founder and you've gotten up to that point in time and you can show that to me and I have a trusting relationship where you're communicating factual data to me, I'm gonna trust your competence and then let you go off to the races. And if you need to pivot, go ahead and pivot. That's the reason early stage investors invest in teams. And the more competent you are, backed up by the correct factual data, the more FOMO sets in. 
the investor says, wait a second, if I don't get in and invest in this founder, no matter what idea they're working on, someone's going to come in and totally jump in on my deal, and I'm going to lose the opportunity to get my capital in at a good price. Later on, what ends up happening is competent founders get a bidding war. There's a flight to quality, and there are investors pitching them and saying, take my capital. And it's such a great feeling to be able to say, we're going to pick who we want to go with because the investors got that FOMO. They need to get in at a good price because eventually not all investors are going to be equal. If they're not in at a good price, they're not going to get a good multiple on their exit. And that's how startup capital works. That's what they need to see. They need to get into companies that are potentially going to get them to a 300x exit. If you get your money in too late, you might only be at a 1.5, maybe a 2x exit, which is not bad. But if you've got a portfolio, you've got all these LPs looking at you like, where are you putting my money? And how come you're not getting me the asymmetric upside? How come you're not getting me the next Airbnb, the next Uber? They're going to look for those outliers. And the more competent you are, the more of an outlier you are because of your competence, because of all these things you're demonstrating in your pitch deck, the more FOMO they're going to have, and they're going to start chasing after you. And that's where you want to get to. Unfortunately, the S tier really has nothing to do with your pitch deck. And that's really the moral of this story. The lesson, the whole point of this is become a competent founder first. If you are a competent founder and you're executing, you're doing all the things founders need to do, going in, talking to customers, building products those customers love, getting that data, using lean methodology, iterating, continual improvement, everything that you need to do, you're going to be competent and the rest of the pitch deck will take care of itself. You probably just need a little help, massaging that information, making sure it's clear. You're off to the races. You are going to be good. You will be funded. The other bonus of being a competent founder is you might not even need funding. If you're competent and you're making revenue and all that data is piling up, so is the revenue in your bank account. You might be able to say no to investors or turn down money at the wrong time. Take it in when it is most advantageous for you. Best time to raise funds is when you don't need it. That's what I suggest. So work on this tier list here. Work through every single slide. Check out some of these other videos that I'm going to put on the screen right now. And as always, I appreciate any comments. Give me some feedback. Let me know how you're doing. Thanks for checking this out. I'll see you in the next video.